Now, over the past 25 years, China's economic miracles has really, as we heard, lifted up hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, but at a great cost of their resource capacity as well as the environment. I'm sure you heard about uh, the Yellow River turning red, I think in 1997. Uh, 267 days, the Yellow River was dry and never reached the Bohai uh, Basin. And as we see the climate change, uh, China's getting more desertification all the time. And so these are the, the problems that we face that not only the water supply is dwindling, but they are also polluted. 70% of the cities that's on the China's river, these waters are not safe to drink nor fish, fishable. And, and so what, what I'd like to do today is to show you a broad perspective and perhaps put in context of the interrelationship between energy, water, and the environment and I think it's quite important that we understand the three interplay of the two countries because what these two countries do on what I, what I call EWE issues will determine whether we survive as a planet uh, or really we run into irreversible catastrophe. Can I have the first slide, please? Now, this is not really to, uh, to get too technical, but if I can walk it through a little bit. Uh, China, as you see, is about 20% of the world's population, with the United States about 4.7%. But in the area of GDP, United States uh, is 31% of the world's economy, and 5.6 five time, times that of China. On the energy side, United States consume 40% more for only a quarter of the population. And on a global basis, United States, as I said, uh, consumes more than 21% of the energy. Now, when we looked at the uh, Emission, a com uh, emission of CO2, first we have to look at what are the breakdown of the China and U.S. sectors of energy. Let me just summarize some key points. Uh, of total energy, not just electricity, uh, United States depends 22% on coal, but it has about 81% of the CO2 emissions. Oil is about 40%, natural gas 23%, hydroelectric, which is, we heard a lot about, it only accounts for 4% of the United States energy, and nuclear about 8 And when we hear about solar, uh, biomass, uh, wind, all of them collectively is less than 1% uh, of our energies today. Back into China, 66% uh, of the energy is derived from coal, 21% oil, 5% natural gas, 7% hydroelectric, and only 1% nuclear. And their alternative sources amounts to about 0.4%. So the polluter really are the, the question of coal. And there is obviously, you heard, economic reasons for it. Uh, United States has about an eight-year supply of oil. That's why we import a lot of oil. China has a 13-year horizon. On the natural gas, the United States have 10 years. But in the area of coal, China has 57, 57 years of supply. 
and surprisingly, the United States has 246 years of supply. So these, these are the statistics, and there is obviously an economic rationale for, for using coal, but we know the fact that it is the largest polluter of, 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 the, uh, of all of the energy sources. Now let's look at, next slide please, on a per capita basis. Now on a per capita basis, uh, United States is 36,400, is now jumped up from the absolute sense from 5.6 times to 24 times that of China. And the energy is about seven times that of China in terms of uh, usage. And part of that is to create the GDPs. Now, if you do on a per capita basis, United States is the great polluter, uh, having about 5.3 times more than China. And uh, on the other hand, China is rather inefficient in terms of how many tons of equivalent oil uh, to produce $1,000 of GDP. So if you imagine, take a, a thousand, you know, take a ton of oil to create 1,000 GDP uh, almost versus a, a 0 0.2 ton. So, so there you see the sort of the broad context of China's uh, inefficiency. But if you do a theoretical analysis to say, gee, what if China were to reach the GDP level of the United States without improving its efficiency? And I'm not even asking for per capita, I'm just saying in absolute number, that would be about $8,000 uh, $8, per, ca per capita. So it's still quite low, but if you take 8,000 times 1.3, that will be equal to our uh, trillion dollars. If you did the math, it would double the CO2 to the whole atmosphere. So, so this is obviously unsustainable in no matter how you look at it and everybody realizes that. Without being an alarmist, uh, now I am alarmed <laughs> because I only have three minutes. <laughs> did, did you eat into my time? Uh, yes, you did. Uh, okay. I'll speed along. Um, 